Good morning. This is Sunday, October the 2nd, 2016. Early church service is over, and this was Communion Sunday. Excellent word. Reading from my utmost for his highest. Yesterday's devotion and today's devotion were particularly important to me this morning. October the 1st, the sphere of exaltation. Mark 9, 2. Jesus leadeth them up unto a high mountain apart by themselves. We have all had times on the mount when we have seen things from God's standpoint and have wanted to stay there, but God will never allow us to stay there. The test of our spiritual life is the power to descend. If we have power to rise only, something is wrong. It is a great thing to be on the mount with God But a man only gets there in order that afterwards he may get down among the devil-possessed and lift them up. We are not built for the mountains and the dawns and aesthetic affinities. Those are for moments of inspiration, that is all. We are built for the valley, for the ordinary stuff we are in, and that is where we have to prove our mettle. Spiritual selfishness always wants repeated moments on the mount. We feel we could talk like angels and live like angels if only we could stay on the mount. The times of exaltation are exceptional. They have their meaning in our life with God, but we must beware lest our spiritual selfishness wants to make them the only time. We are apt to think that everything that happens is to be turned into useful teaching. It is to be turned into something better than teaching. It is to be turned into character. The mount is not meant to teach us anything. It is meant to make us something. There is a great snare in asking, what is the use of it? In spiritual matters, we can never calculate on that line. The moments on the mountaintops are rare moments, and they are meant for something in God's purpose. And today, the sphere of humiliation. Mark 9, 22. If thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. After every time of exaltation, we are brought down with a sudden rush into things as they are, where it is neither beautiful, nor poetic, nor thrilling. The height of the mountaintop is measured by the drab drudgery of the valley. But it is in the valley that we have to live for the glory of God. We see his glory on the mount, but we never live for his glory there. It is in the sphere of humiliation that we find our true worth to God. That is where our faithfulness is revealed. Most of us can do things if we are always at the heroic pitch because of the natural selfishness of our hearts. But God wants us at the drab, commonplace pitch where we live in the valley according to our personal relationship to him. Peter thought it would be a fine thing for them to remain on the mount, but Jesus Christ took the disciples down from the mount into the valley, the place where the meaning of the vision is explained. If thou canst do anything... It takes the valley of humiliation to root the skepticism out of us. Look back at your own experience, and you will find that until you learned who Jesus was, you were a cunning skeptic about his power. When you were on the mount, you could believe anything. But what about the time when you were up against the facts in the valley? You may be able to give a testimony to sanctification, But what about the thing that is a humiliation to you just now? The last time you were on the mount with God, you saw that all power in heaven and earth belongs to Jesus. Will you be skeptical now in the valley of humiliation? Our opening hymn this morning was My Faith Looks Up to Thee. The words are by Ray Palmer, 1830. Palmer wrote these lyrics upon receiving a vision of Christ shortly after his graduation from Yale University while working as a tutor at a New York school. However, he kept them to himself until meeting Lowell Mason on the street in Boston, Massachusetts. 
When Mason asked him to write something for a new hymnal, Palmer dug out his old notes and produced these lyrics, written two years earlier. After taking the lyrics home and reading them, Mason composed this tune. Several days later, he saw Palmer again and said, You may live many years and do many good things, but I think you will be best known to posterity as the author of My Faith Looks Up to Thee. My faith looks up to thee, the Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray. Take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. May thy rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart. My zeal inspire as thou hast died for me. Oh, may my love to thee pure, warm, and changeless be a living fire. While life's dark maze I tread, and griefs around me spread, be thou my guide, bid darkness turn to day, wipe sorrow's tears away, nor let me ever stray from thee aside. When hence life's transient dream, when death's cold sullen stream shall o'er me roll, bless Savior then in love, fear and distrust removed. Oh, bear me safe above a ransom soul. Father, let us not forget the times on the mount that we have been in your presence and have seen that all power in heaven and on earth belong to Jesus. Now, as we rest on this, your Sabbath day, let us prepare to be in the valley where you have called us and that in the valley Jesus is still sovereign our faith does not look to our capacity but looks to thee father you have blessed us richly with grace you have given life to our fainting heart you are the constant in our lives now be in us so that we might be Christ in the world In Jesus' name, amen.